unbreaking. How can I be this broken and yet still breathing, taking life in and out through my mouth and still not feeling because the nerves that wired me together were severed with every blow in this life? So here I sit, broken and numb and feeling dumbfounded that nobody pieced me together yet, that nobody noticed the mess I was in or the mess inside me. Like cracked glass, shattered but still one piece. But that's not true. That's just how it looks because I know there are missing pieces that others took. Pieces lost over long years, pieces diminished by hate or fear, pieces erased through the constant wear of doubt, pieces divulged to a lover's mouth, pieces in storage waiting for their moment, a piece or two so painful I could just no longer hold it. But somehow outside, some trick of the light denied my battered and broken inside. There was a time before I knew I was broken, but hindsight shows that I've always been. I used to think this should just be my end. That this was my normal place in this natural world. Insignificant girl. But I look around me every day at others who don't carry this kind of pain, or maybe it's just that same light trick, more than some glue that sticks their pieces together. But sometimes I dream that I could be whole that I could transcend the lies I've been told and be an entity unto myself sovereign and free, that I could stop humoring convention to avoid the condemnation of my dissension, that maybe I've learned from all the experience and sorted through it and made enough sense to put the pieces in the past where they belong and carry only the lesson along and stop playing in all the same wrong, stop allowing all the same wrong. Maybe instead I could choose right things, obvious, and in front of me. And maybe I could replace twisted motives with alignment. Maybe I could leave this confinement. Maybe I could fill and make healthy and whole all of the chambers now empty and cold, but all of this emotional transitioning up is lonely as hell because friends abruptly dismiss someone for spackling her own heart and soul. The doormat I've been benefited every person I know, the caboose that follows others in tow, the sacrificial lamb ready to be handed over in a slick and practiced maneuver. If you think of your own friends, you'll probably see one that you give up on more easily, one that you neglect more readily, one that consoles you when you shit on her, one that holds on to nothing in her own world. And in my universe, it came to be that the first penguin to jump was always me. Raising the bar and taking it for the team, taking it to a new level. It's no surprise, really, that my desire for transformation would set others reeling. But here I am seeing it all, and for once I'm reluctant to take the fall. For once I'm thinking it's not my job or my, my turn or my job or my cute little hobby to position everyone else before me. But this emotional transitioning up is like pushing against a membrane refusing to rupture. But now I know better and I can't go back to tangled toxicity seeping through cracks in myself. I can do more. I can be more than anybody's been before. And this must be what it would mean to be a caterpillar on the brink at that moment when it ceases to be anything it has ever been before. There comes a time when the threat of the lonely and all the rejection that left you roaming to find an acceptance becomes your shelter, becomes your haven from life's, life's weather. That loneliness that kept me apart is now the solace and salvation of my heart. This isn't the first wild hair I've had to create the change diminishing the bad, but I wouldn't let go of those who enforced my place. So many dialogues in my brain of all the reasons to stay the same and every obligation owed in skewed accounting, which in retrospect was amounting to the same breaking time and again from foes no more readily than friends. And all of this time when I knew better, but still lived life to the letter is the dissonance that broke me, becoming the dissonance that woke me, fully knowing now in control, transforming loneliness into a safety zone. Access controlled in every direction to prevent conceding to others' conventions, because I know now it's a choice whether to stay broken or use your voice, and I know the years I've wasted could have tasted sweeter, and I know the years I've wasted should have tasted better. The price of every wasted year paid in pieces of myself, pieces that will never return, some pieces that I still mourn. And how many more can I mourn before I can't be fixed? How many more before I turn wicked? Life is a blessing and it's temporary and if I know it better and still piss it away in the breeze then I never deserved it to begin with. 
And why the hell should I be obligated to choosing others who never choose me? No, I'll keep only those who participate in reciprocity as a litmus test to determine friend from enemy. Because for the first time, I don't feel the need to hold on just because I don't know what I'll be when you're gone. My love affair with my own future requires a change in my fortune, and I can. I can know better. I can choose me. I can find better things to be in. I can be healthy. I can be whole in my mind, my body, and my soul. I can love others who also love me, and I'll be amazed at the things I can be. And I can inspire, and I can choose greatness. I can take hold of my life in this lateness. I've learned all I can, and I'm done looking back, and I'm ready to get my life on track, and I'm ready to do whatever it takes to repair all the bends and breaks and bruises and memories and start living my fantasies. Why have I stayed broken so long? Why was I party to all of the drama? Why so easy for me not to see that a person was unmade in me? I knew her once. She's a memory now. Someone I could no longer perform anyhow. This woman who was once the way that I thought. Now someone I shake my head thinking she ought to know better. To be better. I am changed. I am changing. Broken pieces take on different meanings. Suffering still permeates my empty spaces, but now leaves room for cozy places and in the irreversible filtration, transforming into clarity and light. I can see the other side. I can feel hope in the pain. I can refuse to abstain from living. See, this knowing is power that within a single hour can rewire and rebuild and strengthen the will of even the broken, the battered and lost, of those who paid too great a cost, of those like me, who have been waiting, feeling like they're suffocating. This is the part where I get up. I'll admit I'm scared, sure enough. We always fear what we don't know. But this desolation can't be my home. So this is the part where I get up. This is the part where I believe. This is the part where I pick me. This is the part where I set free a force of nature inside me to become the person I want to be and live the life I deserve to lead.